This is perhaps the coolest NAS that you're going to see because it features 12 two and a half inch U.2 NVMe bays, plus it has an AMD Epic processor, eight channels of DDR4 ECC Arden memory, so you can do massive memory expansion. In the back, you get both 25 gig and two and a half gig network connections, plus a host of PCIe slots that you can add different features into. We have so much to look at with this NAS, so let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is a QNAP TS H1290FX NAS. Now, that is a huge model name, but this might be the coolest product, and I've wanted to go and do a review of this for the longest time. This is certainly not a new product. We covered this, I think, on the SDH main site quite a while ago. We've had some discussions on it and stuff, but to me, this is like the perfect NAS box, and I'm gonna explain why. Part of the reason, though, is just the fact that we have a new generation of SSDs. Whether you're shopping new, of course, on your SSD side, or you're shopping used, the U.2 form factor of two and a half inch SSDs, just like this solid IM unit right here, is absolutely awesome. Now, these are the 30.72 terabyte drives, but if you look at the hard drive side, the best that you're really getting these days is maybe about 28 or 30 terabytes per drive, meaning that even though this is much smaller, it's also more dense. But these days, if you just want a compact NAS like this and you want a lot of capacity, the answer is, well, either A, you get a giant box with a ton of hard drives that all fail at a much higher rate, which means that you have to do more replacement, or you just get a SSD NAS, you have all the performance you need, you don't have to worry as much about the failure rates because they're much more reliable, and you can get more capacity in a smaller, quieter form factor. The other reason that we're doing this project is because we just need more and faster storage, both for the growing team that we have in our studio, but as well as these cameras, which are frankly using a lot more storage than they used to. Now we have one terabyte SSDs in our cameras that can get filled up in 32 minutes of footage, and it's just wild to see how much storage we're using, especially just as a 1 million sub YouTube channel. The other big use case, of course, is that we have a lot of systems that we're testing with AI models, and so putting it all on shared storage makes life a lot better. Now, this may not be the smallest NAS out there, but I am on a mission to get rid of hard drives from as many NAS units as we can in our production clusters. And so if I wanna go and really live that dream, I have to be able to go and store a lot of data on SSDs, and that's my idea for this little box, while also keeping it quiet enough that we can keep it in the studio not too far from this set. But let's just put it this way. There are some things that we tried out in the system and we learned later on that, uh, well, they did not work as we expected, which makes this a super exciting video. Now, the front of the NAS looks a lot like a lot of other QNAP NASs. You have a USB port, you have your power port, and then you have your drive trays. But then uh, we also have things like the little status LCD screen here. The reason that this matters is because it gives you all the little bits of information that you might want, like an IP address or something, but it's nice to have and it's something that you get on these pre-built NASs that you don't necessarily get if you go build your own. Now turning this around, you're gonna see a fairly interesting layout, right? First, we have our power supply and we have a single power input. So this is not a redundant unit, which I know some folks are gonna want. We also have two large fans. Over here, we have more USB ports and then two SFP28 25 gig ethernet ports. So out of the box, you have the capacity to go and run 50 gigabits of networking just on these ports. The other thing on the other side though, is that you're gonna get these. Now these are the two and a half gig ethernet mix. Now of course you can use these for data connectivity if you don't have 10 or 25 gig ethernet, by the way, you can run 10 on these. The idea is that if you wanna run a little bit faster, you totally can. And since we have a all SSD NAS, I think it's a pretty good reason to go and run faster networking. And on that point, on the STH main site, we have plenty of 25 gig ethernet switch reviews. There are a lot of actually really inexpensive options out there. It's not the case where you need these giant switches that are super loud, that use a ton of power, and uh, you know just unwieldy for a even a small office environment. Nowadays, you can run 125 gig Ethernet in a small office, no problem, without it like hurting your ears. Now, the other feature on the back of this is one that I'm super excited about because you get four full height PCIe slots. Now, we're going to open this up and we'll show you inside and how this works. But the idea of having PCIe expansion in an ass like this should have everybody salivating. And by the way, uh, this is just one thing that both Sam, who's operated the camera, and myself have both done this and noticed this, is that for some reason, 
even though you've removed all the screws that are on the back of this chassis, it is a total pain in the butt to open this up sometimes. I don't know why, but for some reason it just is. I wish there was like a little handle on the back that just kind of helped you open it up, especially because this system feels like it's designed for modding. And I'm gonna show you why when we finally get this open. So give us a sec. Once you get this off, now you can see inside and how cool this system is. Okay, so now that we have the system open, I put it up on a site so you can kind of see how it's laid out. It actually makes a lot of sense when you look at it. So here you can see that we have our two and a half inch drive base. You can see we have our Solidime 30 terabyte drives in here, which by the way, means that this has over 360 terabytes and we're only at the 30 terabyte ones. It's pretty easy these days to get 122 terabytes, which means that you can potentially have well over one petabyte of data in a little system like this. So next we have our ATX power supply. So this has an internal power supply, which of course for a unit this big, you would expect it to, but then it even has like a uh, ATX power connector here, which is nice because at least that means it's not crazy proprietary. You can actually go and service this thing. And some of the other things that are kind of nice in this that might be overlooked is that we actually get PCIe power connectors. So if you want to do things like potentially put a GPU, like workstation class GPU in here to do some kind of AI inference, you can do that uh, just using this power connector. And you don't even have to use like the 75 watt GPUs. You can even use things that are more impressive and use higher power because you have all of the space down here. We'll get there in a sec. But the next feature I wanna point out is that we have this fan here. Now this fan is actually kind of interesting. This is a design that we've seen from a number of vendors. It looks very much like the Dynatron and Supermicro units that we've tested before, where you have the heat sink and then you have a part that goes over and it, uh, it screws on the top. And I just wanna point out real quick that there are three different options that you get in terms of that processor and memory. You get the lower end configuration, which is the one that we have, which is a TS-H1290FX 7232P64G. This is an AMD Epic 7232P processor, P means single socket only, in case you wanna know that. And then you have 64 gigabytes of memory, which means that when we go over here, we know that all eight of these DIMMs are only eight gigabytes each, which is frankly really small in terms of our memory capacity these days, it's actually quite a bit. 64 gigs is pretty good for a NAS. But of course, if you were to talk about a server these days, 64 gigabytes would not be crazy. Okay, and so let's talk a little bit about the PCIe connectivity because I think that's another high point here. Now, of course, a lot of folks are moving to PCIe Gen 5 these days, but at the end of the day, a lot of folks, especially if you're running something like this desktop, you're not really gonna be using like 400 gigabit NICs. And so instead, what you're gonna have in something like this, relatively inexpensive is, you know, 25 gig ethernet, 100 gig ethernet, those types of adapters. And with a PCIe Gen 4 by 16 slot, you can run 200 gig ports. So if you look behind me, it has the configuration of these PCIe slots. And you'll see that we get two PCIe Gen 4 by 16s then we get a by eight and a 16 here. So that's a total of 56 PCIe Gen 4 lanes, which is easily enough to go and run 700 gig ports on there, which is a lot of networking, frankly, probably more than a lot of folks are gonna need. Let me just kind of give you an idea of where we're gonna go with this because my thought is this, you have options for higher end CPUs. Like you could get a 7302P, which I think was like a 16 core part and up to 256 gigabytes of memory. But on the other hand, DDR4 memory these days is fairly inexpensive. So if you wanted to go and add extra memory later on, well, I wonder what it would look like to take the lower end system and if you could go do that. A lot of people get into things like home labs and home servers because you start with storage. Frankly, most people do that. And then they start moving into what are the apps that I can and self-host and what are all the things I can do? And frankly, at eight cores, that's okay. But you know, 16 cores, it's also okay. But if we can get more cores or, or maybe end or more memory, well, that becomes a giant win for a system like this. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about customizing the system and what we thought and what actually happened because those ended up being very different. Okay, so first things first, things that went very well. When we used the 30 terabyte Solidime SSDs, they worked fine. And by the way, just in case you're wondering, we have the 61.4 terabyte drive over here. And you can see that we actually put that in the system that worked as well. But in terms of things that worked well, these Solidime drives actually ran decently cool in the system. We don't have any vibrations, no noise, high reliability, higher performance. 
they cost more, but you know, I think for a lot of folks, there are a lot of things that offset that like extra cost, right? But another thing that worked really well is, uh, you know, we're using these little QNAP carts and you can actually go and use them for expansion bays. So we have like these eight bay and four bay expansion bays. You can actually put those, you know, those cards into here and use them. So if you do want to have hard drives as well as SSDs, so especially if you're using like smaller SSDs and you want like big capacity hard drive storage, and that might just be something that you do just to lower costs in the beginning. Now we, we're not gonna use the hard drives, but something that we put in here that worked really well was we tried a number of different GPUs. Now, QNAP itself supports the, in, the NVIDIA GPUs pretty well. And just given the fact that they work for LLMs, they also have things like, you know, if you wanna do like NVR offload, or you just wanna have a application where you're doing some kind of stable diffusion, or if you're doing something like an image search or something like that, you might want an NVIDIA GPU for those types of applications. And if you do, well, you can go and put a number of different GPUs in here. I actually really like this NVIDIA RTX A1000 because it's an eight gigabyte GPU. It's a you know reasonably new-ish GPU at least in terms of a workstation GPU. It also works in here and it has a span, plus it's a low profile card slide and it's a low power thing. So it's like a 70 watt card. So it's one of those ones that you can put in the system and there's not really that big of an impact. Now, something that there is, if you do want to go put bigger GPUs is that you do get the PCIe GPU connector. So if you have to go and add that, you know, you can, but on the other hand, it's kind of easier just to not have to use these, or maybe you do want to use those for a AI GPU later on or something. We did put very large GPUs in here, like, uh, you know, 48 gigabyte GPUs in here and uh, they, they were fine, but I will just say that, um, you know, I don't know if I would necessarily recommend that for most folks. And another reason that we have the switch here is because of this card that we have been using, we have the normal 25 gigs. We have a dual port 25 gig ethernet solution plus two, two and a half gig NICs. But if you really have all these SSDs, you kind of want a lot more fast networking. And so that's why we have this NVIDIA Connect X6 card with QNAP. Now, you can get Connect X6 cards or actually dual 25 gig NVIDIA cards relatively inexpensively these days. I mean, they're all over the place and they've been using for years, but Connect X6 actually gives us a nice low power floor for, I guess, running these. But the other thing is that this QNAP card has a little fan on it, which might not seem like a big deal, but when you have it in the system, you don't actually have that great of airflow around the PCIe card slots. So just from my perspective, I like this one. It costs a little bit more but it's also a QNAP device. So that kind of helps with compatibility. And also, um, you know, having the fan means that I'm not worried about, you know, is this going to overheat on me because it's sitting over on this side of the chassis, right? So just another idea for you. I will note that we also tried some 100 gig networking and generally that worked okay. One of the things you do have to worry about though, is that especially if you're using optics, the optics have a enough power, especially in the you know QSF P28 generation, where you have those 100 gig optics, where you are going to start to see some heat issues, especially the further over on the chassis you are. So if you're all the way on this PCIe slot, that's gonna be a bigger challenge just because you have less airflow than if you're on the inside, closer to the DIMMs and the CPU. But let's talk about that CPU and memory here for a second. So we tried a number of different options and one of the craziest things, and one of the reasons that that GPU that we put in here really is helping is, well, we tried a, like, I think like six or seven different AMD Epic Rome SKUs. Now, normally when you have a motherboard in a system, it just works with everything. And we thought and recorded the beginning of this video, assuming that we would be able to go and put you know, 64 core processors in here. And so what happened was we actually started putting different CPUs in there and uh, we saw the system booted up, no problem. And, and everything looked great until we realized that there was an issue. And that specifically happened when we put this processor in, which is an AMD Epic 7702. There's a P version of that, which is less expensive as well, but it's a lower power 200 watt CTDP CPU. That's a 64 core, 128 thread processor. But when we put it in this QNAP system, we saw that we only had 32 cores and 32 threads active. It's wild, like why the heck does that happen? I have no idea. But the idea was, well, why don't we go into the BIOS? And if you didn't know this on QNAP systems, even like this, where you don't have normally a GPU, you can put a GPU in, connect a monitor and keyboard, and then you can go into the BIOS. And when we did that, the processor actually showed up as a 64 core, 128 thread processor, but there wasn't any option to go and say like, you know, 
bring this down to only 32 cores or 32 threads or anything like that. The weird thing was that we tried it with 48 core processors, 32 core processors, all that kind of stuff, but we were stuck at that 32 thread limit. So that practically led us to one of two choices. Either A, we could leave a big processor in here and just you know not use the cores, which didn't really seem like a good idea. The other option was we could use a 32 core processor and not get the benefit of having those SMT threads. And that is good because you do definitely 100% get more performance by doing that. But on the other hand, I guess the question was, did that make sense? And we ended up settling on just using a 7302. We didn't have the P version, but just 7302 processor, which allows you to have 16 cores and 32 threads, which is what QNAP offers in the system anyway. And that worked no problem, but I don't necessarily know if that was the best. Now, something else to keep in mind is that the pricing for AMD Epic Roam processors, especially if you wanted to go like get a used one, make sure you don't get a Lenovo or Dell branded one, right? But if you do get a used one, they tend to be a lot less expensive than they were when they were new because you know they're older generation processors now. But something that happened that was great was we took out the eight gigabyte DIMMs that we had. We had 64 gigabytes of memory, remember, in the system. Eight gigabytes times eight DIMMs gives you 64. And so we took out the Kickstin DIMMs and we put in just other DDR4 ECCR DIMMs that we had, DDR4 3200 generation, and they had absolutely no problems in the system. We tried going up to, uh, I think we did 16 gig, we did 32 gig, and even up to 64 gig DIMMs, giving us a total of a half a terabyte of memory in the system. And by the way, if you have a ZFS NAS that just wants to use a, a ton of memory for caching, uh, you have that no problem here. Also, if you want to run virtual machines or whatever the heck you want on there, having 256 or 512 gigs is phenomenal. Now, in all of these videos, I like to have key lessons learned. I mean, what do we learn by doing this whole project? Well, guys, something that we definitely are feeling at STH is just the fact that our cameras are using so much more storage. I mean, for example, this in front of me over here is a DJI Ronin 4D 8K. And when you shoot in 8K mode and like, you know, you're fully, fully going, it uses something like a terabyte of storage in maybe a little over an hour. Just from a standpoint of like how much storage we can use these days, I mean, guys, it is absolutely crazy. And that's far from the only camera that's like that. And so a platform like this QNAP to me is absolutely phenomenal. It becomes a source of truth for the studio. It's not loud. We can customize it. So even though we have the eight core version with 64 gigs as our base, going up to 16 cores, 32 threads, plus having 512 or 256 gigabytes of memory, let's just go run not only an awesome, super fast storage server, but it also allows us to go run a lot of the little production VMs that we might want. There's a whole bunch of different options for however you want to create your studio, but you have so much power in this that you don't necessarily need another box and saving that extra box is just kind of nice. And another awesome benefit of this is that when you load this up with networking, we can actually edit directly off of this system and we don't have to go and get like large rack servers or anything like that. We also have all of the performance we need because we have those 12 NVMe SSDs. We have plenty of storage capacity. I mean, crud, if you were to go get those 122 terabyte drives, right, this is well over one petabyte of storage in a platform like this that's quiet, which is absolutely insane. We just can't afford, afford the 122 terabyte drives for what we do. The 30 terabyte drives pretty reasonable these days. And, you know, especially starting with a couple of those and expanding over time, I think it make a lot of sense. Maybe as we're starting to get into this larger scale, that's something that we're going to use. And that kind of brings me to my final key lesson learned, which is like, this was like that close to being perfect. And in fact, QNAP can make this like the ultimate NAS. It only has to do like one thing. And that's just say, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to allow people to go and put 64 core, 128 thread processors in here. Sure, most likely they're going to end up buying the eight core models and that's kind of a bummer and stuff. But on the other hand, I mean, man, this is like the most awesome platform for this type of application where you just need something that has NVMe storage. It's quiet. You have 25 gig built in networking and you can go add a whole bunch of things, GPUs, other networking, you know, storage expansion, like for expansion chassis, all kinds of stuff in this. I mean, this is an awesome little server that, uh, you know, does everything you could need as a studio. Now look, QNAP, I don't need a warranty. If I go put this in, I get that that's at my own risk and all that kind of stuff. But on the other hand, I really wish I could do it because that would just change this system into something that is just 
untouchable by pretty much anything else on the market at this point. And hey guys, I hope you like this video. This was just a fun project. It actually took a uh, long, like way longer than I thought because we were going through all kinds of different CPU and memory combinations, trying to figure out what the heck was going on here. A bunch of different adding carts. I mean, this was a fun project, but it took a long time to do. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now I know it's not necessarily in the budget uh, range of everybody that's watching this, but we do do a lot of smaller systems. So if you want to see those, you can definitely check those out on the channel. If you did like this video or you're thinking, hey, maybe I could set this up for my office or my studio or whatever, well then why don't you share it with your friends and colleagues? Colleagues. But also while you're at it, give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.